Well, this morning we've got Mr. Uh, Honorable Patrick Obaya going with us. He's a former member of the House of Reps and former uh, Chief of Staff to Governor, former Governor Adam Sushomale of Edo State. He joins us, as you can see there. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. We just rolled some tape about the current governor and the immediate past governor. They were all smiles, and people thought, oh, things are looking hunky-dory. But what you see is not always the case. Now, there are those who believe that the way it's playing out in Edo State, in the APC, if things are not done right, if they're not sorted out properly, you just may play into the hands of the PDP. Do you share that same view, or what is your assessment of what is happening at the moment? Well, good morning, Channel TV, and good morning, Nigerians. Let me start by saying that uh, as a man who saw, who saw it all from the beginning, when both the national chairman of APC, Congress Adams, and the Chimbalé, and the governor of the state, Governor Gordon of Baseki, where political pedos are chances, or if you like, something like a political Siamese swings. I want to say for us, it's uh, agonizing, for us, it is painful, for us, it is opprobrious, and it is uh, a shame that the political ambience in the two states just now has degenerated into an atomistic situation that is written of very, very deprecable ambience. But you want to ask the question, how did we get here? It is important for us to know how we got here, particularly more, even more important for the Excellency, the governor, to know how we got here. I said this because I watched with a sense of media bewilderment and big news media yesterday on television where the governor of the state was put in and say, each system has better. That the reason why we got here is because the national chairman of the party has not taken correct advice. That is not true. That is the fallacy version on security of the How did we get here? We got here by a combination of factors. One, share political megalomania. Class Olympian aloofness on the part of the governor, with subject to his a sense of messianic tokenization, and if you like, a borderline of political and governance, governance acts bordering on political Machiavellianism, bordering on political alienation of the political establishment, bordering on political socialism, Bottling of political methodologism and bottling of political gambadoism. That is how we got to where we are today. Honorable Abago, if you can hear us, we'd like you to just round off on how you think this whole, uh, whole thing started. Well, I, I, I was saying that uh, for those of us who saw it from the one, uh, I want to say those of us who saw it from the one, I'm talking particularly about the fact that our dynamic national chairman, Congress Adams and Leo Shibale, and the governor of those days, where our political freedom of charities and something like a, a political Siamese wings. And of course, therefore, the ambience we find ourselves just now in, in, in those days, a very cantankerous and very tempestuous one, is quite agonizing and mentally market -amaric. But the truth of the matter is that we must be able to trace the full set of the goal of the political government we find ourselves just now. I think it's because even up to yesterday, I watched very, very regrettably the governor of those states saying on television after he went to see Mr. President that one of the reasons why he thought we got to where we are today is because the national chairman has not taken the correct advice. I said, no, 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 that. The truth of the matter is that we got here today by an admixture or a cockpit of very achievable factors. Why? We got here today by sheer political megalomania. We are here today by class political and aloofness. We are here where we are today 
by sense of something we can say. We are here, we are here, we are today by a sense of messianic organization. I think it's like a vote bar of governance and political acts. But, but, uh, politics of materialism. Yeah, but Honorable Obama, but yesterday, uh, not just yesterday, uh, we have heard the governor say that, look, this has got to do with re uh, management of the state resources. He's on tape. He said that several times, and he thought that that's the crux of the matter, as opposed to uh, some of the reasons that you've highlighted. That is far from being correct. In any case, any time the governor has a gone to town or gone to Martin Depots with this kind of very unsubstantiated accusation, he has been challenged to mention one politician or one member of the political class that has asked him to play political rugby Buddhism with the resources of a justice. Has the governor been able to mention one person? No. He can't be able to mention anybody. Truth of the matter, is that Mr. Governor came, came, came on board and decided to run things his own way. No consultation with the party structure, no consultation with the leadership of the party, no consultation with the followership of the party. You know, but, but the, the other aspect of this is that for some who think that, look, this is going to upset and have wider implications having seen the chairman of the party switch support to a former PDP candidate. Now, those who are concerned say they know that the state is based on this tripod, the central, the north, and the south. Now, if the current governor is from the south, uh, he's supposed to go for a second term. If he doesn't make it, if the governor, uh, if uh, Isayamo gets the ticket, I beg your pardon, he becomes the governor, he's also from the South. So there's no way he won't be going for a second term, which will upset that tripod, and they think that that will be a bigger problem that the state will have to grapple with. Not a problem at all. I mean, to, to, assume, to assume that will mean that uh, we are playing God, meaning that we already know that uh, Isayamo uh, pastor, Pastor Zeyamu will go for a second term if he becomes a governor. It is too early to make that uh, assumption. Well, you clearly disagree that uh, it's not just going to upset the apple cart, but in terms of how this is going to play out, will it be direct or indirect primaries because there are challenges about COVID-19 in the state and the restrictions with INEC saying, if you want to hold uh, direct primaries, we have to see your parties register. How do you see this playing out? As a matter of fact, uh, those who are calling for indirect primaries as uh, the best open system out of uh, the COVID-19 situation are just turning logic on its head. And why do I say so? If you look at Article 24A of our party constitution, I don't know if it's there with you, it says that further to Article 23 of this Constitution, indirect primaries for the purpose of nominating the candidate shall be done at a designated venue for that purpose by an electoral college of delegates democratically elected by members of the party from the various wards contained in the particular constituency at Congresses. What this speaks to is the fact that for you to do indirect primaries in accordance with our party constitution, you will have to first of all elect delegates from the respective wards in a do state. After you are through with the exercise of electing delegates from the respective wards, before they now combine with statutory delegates, and you get them to a designated venue for purposes of indirect primaries. So you, so you can see, therefore, that from the clear provisions of our party constitution, indirect primaries is that model of parandy that is not COVID-19 friendly. It, it does not accord. It does not synchronize. And it is not in material with the protocols, with the, with, 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 with the protocols 
of the presidential task force and NCDC. So if we really want a, a, a pathway out of the quad and quad of Madoria of the COVID-19 pandemic, then direct primaries is the way to go. When you look at the guidelines of the PTA, for example, saying, you know, crowds beyond 20 should not gather outside a workplace. And even INEC had to bring out some form of, you know, new guidelines for conducting election in the COVID-19 reality. So obviously, like you know, COVID-19 has affected a lot of things. So seeing those guidelines, the fact that this is a new normal, do you still think that your constitution, which allows for people to gather in a place, will still be feasible? That is why... That is, it, it is looking at this sweet generic circumstance is why the NWC of my party has recommended direct primaries. Because when you, when you nominate the candidate by direct primaries, you are decentralizing the process. You are taking the process back to the respective world. And at the respective world, in conformity and in compliance with the relevant protocols of the presidential tax force and the NCDC, then we are, able, we are able to maximize the situation in the way and manner that we won't put the health of a doctor citizens in danger. But if you go by the route of indirect summary, then what you are saying is that you are first of all asking for delegates to emerge through the liberal and self-contained and self put together political process Thereafter, do not take them again to a designated venue. At that designated venue, you are, central, you are centralizing the presence of delegates and thus exposing them to COVID-19. And that's okay. why I think it, 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 it's a fallacy causing of both hoc, ego, propter hoc, and perpetual frequency when the government and the political minders are advocating for indirect primary. Okay. Even though many wonder how will direct primaries then solve it, if it won't make it any worse. But could you then tell us, for having heard some material, I mean, heard the, the, the former, the chairman at the time says he was not going to touch Isayama with a pole, but now he's throwing his weight behind him. How do you reconcile that? Uh, the, the, the national chairman of the party is not the one throwing Isayama up uh, for this uh, election. It's... Uh, is, is clear political mischief when when people attribute the swelling uh, popularity and grassroots uh, grassroots capacity for governization by Isaiah Yamu to mean that he is having the support of the national chairman. That is not correct. Uh, Isaiah Yamu at this point in time, you know, is answering the call of the people. You know, the people are the one. The people are the one who are saying that. Uh, is that Yamu, you have uh, you, you have paid your price. We have seen your political pronunciamento. You have you have displayed consistency. You have displayed integrity. You have displayed capacity. It, it, it is time for you to to, to to test the political ideology. You have been perfecting the political atmospheric switch. So is that Yamu is, is riding on, on, on his own crest, and he's not riding on the crest of the national chairman of the party. It's just political mystery, you know, for those who are saying to, uh, to, to apply. All right, uh, Andrew Patrick Obaya, uh, former member of the House of Reps and former Chief of Staff to Governor Adam Sushamale at the time. Thank you very much indeed for your thoughts this morning.